welcome to Wrestling Nostalgia. I'm your host, Dave Dynasty. Thank you for joining us and uh, being patient with us, because I know this episode was due out, uh, uh, what, two weeks ago, I believe? I don't know. Had a lot going on, busy schedule, just crazy crap going on, and it caused a delay. I am truly, truly sorry. But as a thank you for your patience, what we're doing, if you saw on social media, you already know this, what we're doing is we're releasing three episodes in, at one. Right, we had a poll out there of which interview you wanted to hear: Jerry Jarrett, Rip Rogers, or Larry the Axe Henning. Now, Jerry Jarrett won the poll and was going to be the interview that we did. But as a thank you for your patience, you know what? We're going to put three episodes out. We're going to put all three out, so anybody that voted and anybody that cared is happy. At least I hope. So consider this an early Christmas present <laughs> and a special thank you for your patience and for listening to our show. Uh, so. You know, that's that's the what's where we stand, right? We've got three episodes, three great interviews with three legendary people from the wrestling business. And in this episode, you're going to hear an interview with the legendary Larry the Axe Henning. Uh, this was right at the end of Larry's uh, life. i not 100% sure. Uh, I don't know if it can be verified or not, but this was perhaps the last interview of this fashion done with Larry Henning, or at least one of the last and this was, it was great to talk to him. It was such an honor. Uh, he sung us a little song, told us some stories. It, it was amazing. Uh, I'm so glad that I got to speak with Larry Henning and interview him. And I hope you enjoy the interview, which I'm sure you will. I mean, how can you not? So let's take a break. And when we come back, we will have that interview with Larry the Axe Henning. So stick around. Be sure to follow the Dynasty Wrestling Podcast Network and all of the participating podcasts on social media. The easiest way to find us is on Twitter. You can follow the network at WrestlePods. And you can find all the individual shows at their Twitter accounts. You can find the Wrestling Nostalgia Show at Wrestle Nostalgia, the Ring a Ding Dong Dandy Podcast at Stampede Pod, and the Wild Men Podcast at Wild Men Podcast. Also, search us on Facebook for pages and groups. Participate, interact, join the network. And be a fan. Thank you for your support. I'm joined today by an outstanding guest, a multi Hall of Famer, the legendary Larry the Axe Henning. Mr. Henning, how are you? I'm I'm just fine. I'm great. As a matter of fact, well, that's good. Uh, the older I get, the better I get. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Not a lot of people get to say that, do they? So. Oh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, let's. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today uh, about your career, Mr. Henning. Uh, talk about when you broke in. It was in the the uh, the early '60s, correct? And, and did you train with Vern Gagne uh, there in Minneapolis? Well, I changed. I, I, I trained with a couple guys. Uh, as a matter of fact, three guys: uh, uh, Joe Pazendak, uh-huh. who was a, uh, a super wrestling heavyweight. Vern Gagne and Billy Robinson. So I, okay. I actually had three trainers. Okay, and uh, you, you worked a little bit there for Vern, and then, uh, but then pretty early on, uh, you went to Texas. What, what sparked the move to Texas for you there early on in your career? Well, it was uh, the money. <laughs> uh, when you, <laughs> when you wrestle professionally, you got to follow the money. Right. Okay. And uh, and uh, that's exactly what I did. Okay. And I and I still had to maintain uh, working out, training, and keep myself in good shape so I could live longer, so I could uh, do interviews like this. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Good. So when you uh, when you went to Texas, did did you feel that that Texas style, that that kind of that brawling, that brutal style, that that kind of helped shape? Who who you became as a wrestler and and the and the, the style that, that you became known for? Uh, they 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 had a lot of good wrestlers out of Texas, uh, the Funk Brothers, the uh, mm-hmm. uh, the, the fact the dad, and then uh, the two sons, mm-hmm. uh, Terry, and uh, it was good. It, uh, it kept me busy, and uh, on, on top of all that. Uh, it was, at that time, I didn't know that, but it was really grooming me 
for bigger and better things. Yeah, and that's also where you met Harley Race, wasn't it? How did you How did you meet Harley? Tell us about meeting Harley there in Texas. Uh, we just passed in the night when we were down there. He was younger than I was, and uh, uh, we had talked about it, and we were hoping that the opportunity came about. And uh, I was up uh, wrestling on TV at the old Calhoun Beach Hotel, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, he came up to uh, wrestle on TV, and uh, we got to talking, and uh, uh, we got along real well, and I liked his style. Mm-hmm. So I jumped right on it. We got together and uh, won the World Tag Team Championship and traveled the world, Australia, uh, Japan, 28 times. Uh, uh, we went everywhere together, Europe. Uh, uh, it, was a, it, it was a friendship and a, and a business together, and today we're still friends. Yeah. Uh, we talk once in a while. He's, his health is not too good right now, but yeah. uh, uh, we talk uh, now and then. Yeah. Well, and, and one of the teams, one of the, the, the famous rivalries that you guys were known for was uh, was you guys against Dick the Bruiser and Crusher. So tell us about working with Bruiser and Crusher and those uh, those matches that you guys had, uh, particularly over the, the, the world tag titles there. Well, they're uh, in great conditioning, both great athletes, and uh, – they came from uh, uh, the Chicago and Milwaukee area, mm-hmm. uh, and they were just tough, rugged uh, type guys, and uh, that's the same way that they wrestled. Yeah, uh, we wrestled the sold out. I don't know how many times the Amphitheater in Chicago mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Milwaukee and Winnipeg and. Uh, Oh, I could go on and on, but uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they were good for us, and in the long run, we made a lot of money with them. Yeah. So tell us, after a few years, just early on there, you 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 suffered a pretty severe knee injury. Uh, tell us tell us about that happening. It was in Winnipeg, wasn't it? Yeah, Winnipeg. Uh, that, that's what broke up our team. Uh, I took it was two years before I got back, and then Harley kept rolling. And that during that time, Harley had become uh, three or four times uh, world champion. Mm-hmm. Uh, we broke up, and then we got together after that. Uh, we went to Australia and uh, uh, Japan and, and uh, other places. Yeah, well, tell us this this story of, of when you hurt your knee, and then you take the car ride back from Winnipeg uh, back to Minneapolis before you went to the hospital. Yeah, well... I didn't want to go to the hospital in Winnipeg. Yeah. Uh, so Harley drove me back. Uh, cold winter night, uh, and they checked me in the hospital, uh, Northwestern Hospital. Uh-huh. And uh, the next day, uh, they told me how bad it was, and then. Um, Wally Carbo and Ganya came to the hospital and uh, said, well, you're going to Chicago. I said, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> the guy next to me in the room, and he, I, he said, well, you got to make an appearance. So they got me out of the hospital, got on an airplane, flew to Chicago. <laughs> uh, I didn't wrestle, but I walked down to the ring and kind of moped around there and, uh, uh, at least I made it first. The guy said, you're going where? I said, I'm going to Chicago to wrestle. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was, it was bad. Uh, it lasted a long time. Yeah. And, and yeah, and you and Harley teamed for a little bit and then, and then you kind of went your separate ways and you, you were teaming with different guys, Lars Anderson, and then you teamed for a while with Dusty Rhodes and different things. And then, Eventually, you came back to Minneapolis, and, and suddenly the the fans were behind you. You right, you you kind of came to the rescue of Jim Renzel and Greg Agnew. What was it like for kind of the first time, really, in your in your career there to have the, kind of the fans cheering for you and, and and behind you? How did that How did that feel for you? Well, it was great, and as a matter of fact, on the, on the Robinsdale High School on the, that big wall there, uh, and the high school, someone wrote on there the axe is back. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It is you for miles. Yeah, yeah. You had um, you you fit in well with the AWA style because you had you had an amateur background. Is that did you and Vern click and get along well? Because er, Vern always liked you know those guys with the amateur background. Vern, uh, Vern, yeah, Vern was ten years older than I was, so uh, uh, we never wrestled as amateurs. But uh, I was a state champion. Uh, uh, my sophomore year, the first year I went out for wrestling. I took third in the state, and my senior year, I was a state champion heavyweight. Yeah. In fact, Dr. Delco, my wrestling coach, I was his first state champion. So to this day, John and I, who was a great coach, coach at Robinsdale, Augsburg, and other colleges, we're still great friends. Yeah. And you, I mean, you, but, yeah. yeah, and you actually got, you, were, you earned a scholarship to, what, was it Minis- University of Minnesota, and uh, and got to wrestle a little bit there, right? Yes. Yeah, that's a that's pretty spectacular. Yeah, I know Vern. Vern likes those amateur guys. He likes the guys with the the actual amateur background. Um, so, when, yeah. uh, what was it like? Talk, talk to us. You talked about Billy Robinson helped train you, uh, and he's he's kind of known as that. He's got that English catch style and stuff about it. What? How, uh, tell us about Billy Robinson and, and working with him and how tough he was. Well, uh, he came from England, of course, you know that. But uh, as an amateur. Uh, uh, again, a collegiate wrestler and Olympic wrestler. Uh, he was one of the, the best in the world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I, I think that's how he, he got here because of that's the caliber of wrestlers that uh, Wally Carbo and Vern Gagne wanted. Yeah. Where people were wrestling backgrounds. And uh, so it worked out real well for him. Yeah. Um, and then... You know, not long after there, as we got into the 80s, uh, obviously your son Kurt started wrestling, and it started becoming a big star, and you actually got to team with Kurt for a while and actually won uh, the Pacific Northwest Tag Titles. Uh, what did that mean for you? I mean, that was right there at the end of your career, but how did that feel for you to get to, to get to team with your son and actually even capture tag titles with him? Well, most everybody could re- can relate to that that has sure. a son. Yeah. Uh, right yeah. now, you know, we have five children. Uh-huh. Uh, we have 20 grand uh, and great grandchildren. Wow. Uh, 20, uh, 24 more boys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, we get quite a nest over here. And yeah. we spend our time now. We got uh, daughters that go, uh, uh, one's uh, uh, over in Wisconsin, uh-huh. and the other one's in uh, Nebraska. And they're uh, very good volleyball players. Oh, yeah, and we have a lot of other wrestlers coming along the way, so we're we're kind of a sports uh, uh, acclimated family. Yeah, of course, and of course you're, you're, you're you know Curtis Axel, you're you're uh, Joe, your son. They're wrestling in WWE now and having a lot of success there. Uh, do, you, do you you watch him much on TV and, and watch his stuff, or how often do you hear from? Not him? Right now, he, he's on at seven o'clock. He, You'll be on tonight on, uh, that's on right. the wrestling. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, he's been, been with them eight, nine years now. Yeah, right. And uh, he's doing real well with them. Yeah. He's making money. That's the bottom that's, line. <laughs> that's got, right. That's what it's all about, isn't it? He's got three boys, <laughs> and uh, he lives up in the Anoka area there. Yeah. So yeah. we're happy. Yeah. Well, the, you, know, the main, you know what the main thing is, though, that uh, we're all healthy people. Sure. Yeah, of course. And, uh, and we work hard, and uh, uh, I got I, I was really blessed with a great family. Absolutely. And great grandkids, great grandkids. Uh, so we're we're happy people here. Uh, yeah. Today is today is our sixty third uh, wedding anniversary today. Really? Well, happy anniversary! That's that's awesome. That's amazing. And you guys. You and your wife, um, you own a real estate company, right? Then you've had that for a long, long time. I mean, you you even owned that while you were wrestling, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I, I at that time I didn't know how long I was going to last, so I had mm-hmm. to have somewhere to go, you know. And so I got my real estate license uh, in '57. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, so that's... I've been around a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, that's something to be said for the experience there, right? I mean. <laughs> So tell us, you also, something that maybe not a lot of people even realize about you, that you 
you actually worked up in New York uh, and wrestled Bruno San Martino for the WWF title. What was it like wrestling yeah. Bruno when he was the champ and, and, and at the height of his popularity? Oh, that, that, was, that was big. I, I, I flew the family out there when we wrestled in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I was thinking about that Mexican guy who was uh, uh, Pedro Morales. Pedro Morales, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, so he was another one out there on the coast. It was very big. Yeah. But uh, I, was, I wrestled in uh, Boston Garden and Madison Square Garden and all the bigger towns out, out east there, and uh, uh, that was quite a thrill for me. In fact, that's where I got the name, the axe. I oh, yeah. hit a guy so hard in the head, the announcer got it. It looked like he got hit by an axe. <laughs> well, that's what happened. That's, that's where it started. Yeah. So, what what did you think of uh, of working for Vince Vince McMahon Senior? What was he like? Uh, I have to tell you that you know, if the, yeah, he was just starting. Uh, uh, well, I wrestled for the for Vince's dad. Uh huh. Right. And yeah. whatever they told you, whatever they told their promotion, very rare they they did. They, they kept they kept their word financially. Mm-hmm. Kept their word for uh, uh, important matches. Uh, made sure that I had a place to train. Uh, it was very, it was very, it was a, it was a nice romance, and uh, uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, well, that's good. And uh, you've been in multiple. You're in multiple Hall of Fames now. Uh, you're, you know, in the in the the Luthes Hall of I've Fame. Been in you're you're in multiple Hall of Fames. I mean, I I don't even know how many different Hall of Fames you've been inducted in. Uh, and, and I'm in I'm in four Hall of Fames. Four Hall of Fames. Yeah. What does it mean for you at this stage of your career or your life for people to remember you and, and what you accomplished and, and when those honors come up? How how does that make you feel to know that all these years later people still remember Larry the Axe Handing and what he did? Well, you know, uh, I don't know how many four Hall of Fame. Uh, athletes, athletes, athletes there are in the world. Yeah. But I, I, I know I'm one of very few, and I, and I was put there not only by the promoters but by wrestlers. Sure. Yeah. And, and they appreciated uh, more than more than Wally Carbo and uh, Vern Gagne did here. But um, I'm just saying that it's a great thrill. How many people are in the four halls of fame for yeah. one sport? Yeah, not, not, not many. Wow. That's right, not very many. Well, uh, I talked to, to Carol Castle, set this up. She told me that I needed to ask you with about the Winter Carnival. I'm not real familiar with what the Winter Carnival is since I'm not from that part of the U.S., but she said that you were very important in bringing the Winter Car- Carnival from Winnipeg to St. Paul. What? Tell me that story and what that, what that is. Well, uh, I was into snowmobile racing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they started to, they were going to do their, one of their, uh, they tried to figure out some way to get the, the winter carnival started. So they thought if they had a race between Winnipeg and St. Paul, and by when they left 500 miles, and by the time they got to St. Paul, uh, there'd be enough publicity and all that would help, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I, I run the race, uh. I run it two years. I took a, uh, I took twenty second the first year and eleventh the second year. But you got to remember that I weighed as much as a machine. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I run into a chicken coop, uh, <laughs> run over a Volkswagen. <laughs> I had, I had. Uh, it was it was quite a deal. Yeah. But I did make it and I finished and uh, now I have. Cool. And it was really cold. Yeah, yeah. it was below zero all the way. And my wife uh, had brought a camera along to follow me, and yeah. the camera froze up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? Uh, so tell you me. Know how cold it. Oh, tell me about this this picture I've seen of you. Where you it looks like you you, you clean and jerk the snowmobile. Tell me about <laughs> tell me about that. Was that part of that or? Well, that all started out as a bet. They said I couldn't do it. Uh huh. And, uh, and who, the who, Polaris people said I couldn't do it. Oh, okay, Polaris. Okay. But I did it. Yeah? I did it. And uh, and what did you win? Did you win the snowmobile? Pardon me? <laughs> what, what did you win in the bet? 
Uh, they gave me a snowmobile. Gave you the snowmobile, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. Uh, so there be, I was. Had to be good publicity for them. <laughs> and it was, it, 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 was, it was a nice story and until I went up deer hunting and I went through the ice and, the, and me and the snowmobile were built, both <laughs> under, under the water. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> that's funny. Oh. But, you know, who would think... Uh, uh, 64 years ago, that uh, I would be uh, graduated from Robbinsdale, and I'm returning to Robbinsdale to the Wicked Ward. Yeah, yeah. So- <laughs> and, and the fellow that owns that, Steve Carlisle. Uh, he's quite a guy, quite a promoter, uh-huh. and you know they have their own brewery there. Yeah, I, I hear they're naming a beer after you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to come back, and uh, it's going to be quite a deal there. He's got a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of athletes coming, a lot of wrestlers coming, a lot of other uh, friends uh uh, Steve has put together uh, the owner. He is the owner of the Wicked Ward. Uh-huh. And on November 17th, uh, from 3 to 7, that's a Saturday. So if you're not doing anything, get down there because it's yeah. going to be uh, it's going to be a fun day. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and do you, know what, do you know what the name of the beer is? No. What's the name of the beer? The axe is back. The axe is back. <laughs> well, you know, I do like beer, so I can only imagine it, it had to be a pretty strong beer, right? I mean, to to be named after the yeah, axe. <laughs> yeah, we were there, and uh, I'm trying to pick out a beer that everybody will like. That's kind of hard to do, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's from three to three to seven on Saturday, the seventh, November seventeenth. Yeah. Okay, no, we were there. At the Wicked War in Robbinsdale. And, yeah, sounds like Straight a good time. Means- Pardon me? I said it sounds like a good time. You... Sounds like a good time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it'll be a great time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dave, what do you, uh, what, what, what's a little of your background? Where do you come from? Well, I'm born and raised in Indiana, so uh, so I, I'm I'm in the heart of Dick the Bruiser country, and uh, lived here all my life. So, uh, and uh, yeah, so I, I grew up grew up watching the AWA. Uh, had it on TV here, and and saw you and you and Kurt and all those guys, you know, through the '70s and '80s, watching them. So, yeah, you guys, uh, you guys played a big part in my childhood watching you guys on TV. Well, then you know about Bruiser and Wilbur Snyder and all that group, uh, then you know, yep. uh, they're from Indiana originally. Yep. So, yep, yeah. absolutely. That was a yeah, that was the wrestling I grew up on. Uh, yeah, that Bruiser up there in the WWA, running out of Indianapolis and stuff, and he he'd come here. I, I'm actually from Columbus, Indiana. Kind of a kind of a mid sized town, and he'd he'd come here about uh, two or three times a year and, and run a show. So it was always exciting. But yeah, yeah, Bruiser Bruiser's still the big hero around here, even even today. <laughs> He's still a, still a big name. Who, who would have thought all those years ago that we uh, one from Indiana, Minnesota here, and we're talking about a place called the Wicked War I know. And, uh, <laughs> and getting a beer with your name on it. Yeah, uh, who'd ever thought it? Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's quite a world we live in now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I'm telling you, if you told me years ago that I'd ever be talking to Larry the Axe Indian, I thought you, I would have thought you're crazy. So <laughs> I'm just honored just to be talking to you, just to begin with. So, so well, Larry, we appreciate you coming on and talking to us. We'll let you. We won't keep you any longer. Um, just want to make sure everybody does remember November 17th there at the Wicked Wart. Uh, we'll put that information out there for all the guys that listen to our stuff so they know all about that. Uh, go out and see Larry, uh, try his beer, uh, and meet everybody else there. So, Mr. Henning, we appreciate you coming on and talking to us. Uh, it's been truly an honor to, to talk to you uh, this evening. Well, let me ask you, where are you guys located at? Uh, we're, we're in Indiana, Columbus, Indiana. Okay, you're calling from there. Yep, yep, I'm in, yep, calling from Columbus, Indiana, yep. Well, good for you. Yes, sir. I went to I went to Indiana before there was a four lane highway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well. Oh man. 
there, there's always so much road construction here that most of the highways are are down about single lane anymore anyway it's it's never ending around here <laughs> they're always working on the roads i see well that's great that's great <laughs> yeah well anyway i just want to let you know again you know uh, uh maybe this robin's deal uh people will yep. won't have a hard time finding it but it's uh, November 17th from 3 to 7 on a Saturday. And the name of the beer is The Axe is Back. That's all right. Beer. And uh, I'm trying to get my daughter, granddaughter is a good artist, to, uh, uh, they're working on the label for us, so. Well, good deal. We're going to yeah. have, have our own label, too, so. Yeah, good. So hopefully we'll see that uh out there on on the internet, some some pictures of that. Does that when that's designed and stuff? So, yeah, sounds sounds exciting on November seventeenth. Uh, go out and try yeah. try Mister Henning's beer. There, the axe is back. There's going to be a lot of amateur wrestlers there. Uh, Steve from um, Saint Cloud State there. He mm-hmm. won the national championship two years in a row wrestling. Yeah. And then, uh, so. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of good good people there, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, sounds like a lot fun. of fun. And I might even sing a song. I've been I've been doing some singing lately. Yeah. What? Uh, there's not, there's, well, as the people don't know, you know, I <laughs> there's not as not as big as demand as I thought there'd be. <laughs> but uh, yeah. so, uh, what what song do you sing? What, what, What's your song? Yeah. What's your song? What's, what's your song? Well, sing? I do. I, I do uh, Cut Your History. I sing a little bit for you here. Yeah, go and for it. And Old But riding out one dark and windy day, upon a ridge he rested as he went along his way. Oh, and all at once a mighty herd of red cows he saw plowing through the ragged sky and up a cloudy draw. yippee i oh Yippee-i-yay, ghost riders in the sky. That is outstanding. That's all you're getting right now. That's it. That's a preview. You got to you got to come November seventeenth to hear more. Is that right? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> come the seventeenth to hear more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I have to go pretty quick here. Lawrence Welk's going to be on. You know, I watched Lawrence Welk <laughs> every. All right. Well, we'll let you go then, Mr. Henning. <laughs> thank you for talking to us tonight. Hey, thanks, you guys. And good luck to you guys. You, you did a good job. Thank, thank you. you. Have, thank a good, you for- have a good night, sir. Support all of the podcasts here on the Dynasty Wrestling Podcast Network. The best way to do that is go to our Pro Wrestling Tees store. It is at ProWrestlingTees.com slash The Dave Dynasty. There you will find all of the shirts that we offer. I Heart Old School Wrestling, Bruiser Buddy, the podcast mass shirt, and of course, the official shirts for the Ontario Wild Man and the Ringa Ding Dong Dandy podcast. Visit ProWrestlingTees.com slash The Dave Dynasty, order a shirt, and support the network. If you would also like to support, you can join our Patreon. It's at Patreon.com slash Dave Dynasty. There, you will get exclusive audio and video clips, early releases on podcasts, and much, much more. And if you would just like to make one-time contributions to support us, you go to paypal.me slash the Dave Dynasty. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for listening. Continue to support independent wrestling podcast. All right, there you have it. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Wrestling Nostalgia with Dave Dynasty. And thank you for being patient with us. Like I said, uh, lots going on, caused some delays, but as a thank you and an early Christmas present, we gave you this triple shot of episodes today with three great interviews. We hope you enjoyed them, and we hope you tune in next week to another free episode of Wrestling Nostalgia with Dave Dynasty. Until then, be good, be safe, and keep on growing.